The Gemara continues its discussion of the Machlokes about Tzim and Asi Lidaris between Rabba and Rava. The Gemara will continue bringing proofs, and then the Gemara will move on to discuss the next lines in the Mishnah. So let's begin. Just to briefly review, the Gemara said there's a Machlokes whether a Simon on an object that will be knocked off if the object is trampled and it's in a place where it can be trampled, does that count as a simon that makes people not be miyayish, or do people realize that the simon is going to get knocked off and therefore they are miyayish? So Machlech is Rabba and Rava. Rabba says that it is not a simon and people are miyayish. Rava says that it is a simon and people are not miyayish. So Gemara's first proof is from our Mishnah, where it says that loaves of bread that are made in the store belong to the owner, implying that loaves of bread that are made by individuals in their homes, home-baked bread, is considered to be something with a simon. People are not miyayish because they're all different from each other. You can tell them apart and you didn't sell them to anybody. And therefore, you can you will have a simon based on the shape or whatever it is that it is yours. So now, says the Gemara, that means that home-baked bread, as we said, there is a simon. We did not say that it depends on whether it's found in Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Yachid. If it's found in Rosh Hashanah, though, it's a simon also the Darius. People will step on it, knock out the shape, and lose the simon. And yet we still see that it's considered to be something that they're not miyayish, and you have to return it. That is the proof that a simon also the Darius is a good simon, a raya to Rava and Akasha on Rava. So Gemara says, Rava will answer that it will really... Simon Asayi Daris is not a simon. However, this is not Asayi Daris because the Allah is you're not allowed to step on or over food, and therefore people aren't going to step on the bread. It's not going to be knocked off. Asks the, asks the Gemara, what about Nachrim? They don't have this halacha, so they will step on it and it'll be knocked off by them. My answer is Nachrim don't step on bread either because they're concerned that there's witchcraft placed in the bread. That was a common practice with food left on the street in those days. Says the Gemara, okay, Yisraelim won't step on it. Nachrim won't. What about animals? <clears throat> animals or the dogs will eat it or ruin it. The Gemara says this must be referring to a place where there are no animals or dogs around, but if there would be, you'd be right. There wouldn't be a simon and you would be able to keep it. And now the Gemara wants to say that actually the Machlekes in the end of our Mishnah is based on this Machlekes. The Gemara brings the Machlekes. Rabbi Yehuda says anything which has something strange about it, which has something odd, such as if you have a cake of pressed figs and there's a pottery shard in it, or if you have a loaf of bread and there's money in it, that's something strange, and that has a simon. Tanakama says that that is not a simon by implication. Says, well, what is the machlekes about whether this thing is a simon or not? So says the Gemara, you should have three issues here. First of all, um, is it a simon? Is it something which people will step on? And that's a question of, do people step on food or not? It could be a machlekes about that. It could also be a machlekes about, is a simon also the daris? This simon which is here could get knocked off. Is that a simon or not? And then the last thing could be that the owner doesn't necessarily know about this simon. He may not know that money fell into the bread into the dough. He may not know that a pottery shard fell into the cake of pressed figs. So there's something which the owner may not know about, is that something we assume is a simon or not? And that's what's called simon also me elof. Now, in order to hold that you have to return this, you would have to hold that a simon above me elof is a simon. So therefore, there could be a simon here. And you would also have to hold one of the following two things. Either you would have to hold simon also li dores is a simon, or you would have to hold, even though simon also li dores is not a simon, but ein mavir and al echlon, people don't step on food. The Gemara is going to go through different combinations as to which of these three factors could be the Machlegis. So we'll have two different versions, each going through the three factors. Going to the first version, we wanted to say that this Machlegis is based on exactly our Sligit. It's based on whether a simon asili dores is a simon or it is not. Therefore, the Gemara wants to propose that everybody holds the fact that it's a simon above me love is not an issue. Everybody agrees that that's a simon. So there is definitely a simon here. What is the is about? So I want to say the Machlechus is about our issue. Is it a, is a simon of a simon or not? And we have to make this a simon of Asilidaris, therefore it has to be that people do step up. So everyone agrees that people will step on it. The question is, is a simon of a simon or not? The Tanakhama holds that it is uh, not a simon, and Rabbi holds that it is a simon. So says the Gemara, problem though, the Tanakhama holds that people will step on it, and simon of is not a simon, why would they say, why would the Rabbanon imply earlier in the Mishnah that bread that is baked at home, home-baked bread, is something that you have to return? But simon al and mavir al So therefore the Gemara changes the Pshat, and we'll have a way of learning for Rabba and a way of learning for Rava. So Rav Zvid says for Rava, everybody holds a simon al is a simon, and people will step on the food. So since people will step on the food, uh, you have to say that it is a simon. 
like Rav says, Simon also the there is a simon. This machlok is about is simon haba me'elav. Is there a simon here at all? Since this could have fallen in on its own, the Tanakhama holds it is not a simon, and therefore you can keep it. Rav Yehuda holds it is a simon, and therefore you have to return it. Now, according to Rabba, we'll have to say that Simon Asi Lidaris is not a Simon, like Rabba says, and therefore, in order for the Simon here to be worth anything, we have to say that Ain Mavir and Alechlin people won't step on food. And again, we're arguing about Simon of Me'elav, according to Tanakama, like we said, it is not a Simon, and according to Rabbi Hida, it is a Simon. Now, a whole other version of this Gemara was that we weren't trying to pair this up on the Machlokes about Simon Asi Lidaris, we we're trying to line this up on the Machlokes about Mavir and Alechlin. According to this, we said as follows. At first, we wanted to say that everyone agrees that Simon Haba Me'elav is a Simon, so you have a potential Simon here, and that Simon Asa Lidaris is not a Simon. The question is, is the Simon going to get trampled on or not? Um, the Malachikis is, do people step on food or not? Maybe you're not Eichlin or not. Uh, one opinion in the Mishnah holds Mavir and al and therefore there's no Simon here. People trample it off. The other one holds that Ein Mavir and al Eichlin. Said Rosvid, same kash as before though. If you want to say that the Tanakama holds Simon also Lidaris is not a Simon and Mavir no Eichlin, that means that bread that's left in the Shasarabim will lose the Simon. How come? The implication is that home baked bread you do have to return, but the Simon will get knocked off and it'll be lost. So therefore, Rosvid says, like we said before, according to Rav, you'll have to explain everybody held Simon also Lidaris is a Simon and Mavir no Eichlin. And here the argument is about Simon of Me'elav. Tanakama holds Simon of Me'elav is not a Simon. Use the whole Simon of Me'elav is a Simon. Going to Rabbi, you'll have to say the opposite. Everyone agrees that Simon Asi Lidaris is not a Simon. And Ein Mavir and Eichlin, people aren't going to step on it. And here the Machlekes is about Simon of Me'elav. Tanakama holds Simon of Me'elav is not a Simon. And uh, Rabbi Yudah holds Simon of Me'elav is a Simon. The Gemara now says a few halachas in the laws of Simon. And Rosvid says the name of Rava. The rule is you can tell that somebody is mevayat that someone is mayash when he says vay lechasarin kis who owes to me that I've lost money, I've lost value. Rosvid says another halacha: if you have kriches b'shasarabim, the bundles of grain in b'shasarabim, and the halacha is as follows: um, if it is b'shasarabim, like we said, it's harayil shalai, you can keep them. Because there's no simon on them. If it's Bershus Hayachid, then it depends. Can you use Makam as a simon or not? If it looks like it was dropped there, the person doesn't know where it is, he couldn't tell you where he lost it, then it's Ariel Shalai. If it is looks like it was placed there, then you do have to return it because the person will remember where it was. And this is again, it's, as we said, this is something which does not have a simon, but if something which has a simon, then it doesn't matter where it is, there is that simon, and therefore one is obligated to return it either way. Umarna moves on to the next line in the Mishnah where we said that strings of fish do not have to be returned, which implies that there's no simon on them. The is going to discuss why isn't the measurement of items to be a simon. So the Umar says, first of all, let the knot on the string be a simon. The Umar answer is it must have been a standard fisherman's knot. Everyone makes that type of knot. So the Umar, what about the number of fish on the string? It must be that minion is a simon, but there is a standard number of fish on the string. Now the Umar quotes that as a shiler. If Shashis asked, is a number of items a simon or not? Um, the message they asked that question to Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah answered, we learned in the price of somebody finds uh, silver or copper kalim, or he finds pieces of lead, or any type of metal kli, he should not return it until the person gives a sign, or until he has the proper weight. Since the weight of the object is a simon, the number of items should also be a simon. Next line in the Mishnah was about pieces of meat. So the Gemara says, why isn't the weight of the meat a simon? It must, it must be that there's a standard weight. The Gemara asks, why isn't the piece of meat itself, which part of the animal it's from, the neck or the legs or the sides, why is that not a simon? Did we not learn a brisa that the type of meat itself is a simon, like it says, if someone finds pieces of fish or fish with vitamin marks on it, he does have to return. If he finds barrels of wine, oil, grain, figs, or olives, those he is allowed to keep. So you see there that the uh, pieces of fish are a simon itself. And the answer is it's not talking about the part of the animal, the part of the fish that the piece is from. It's talking about where the fish itself is cut in a funny way. Like Rabbi Baravuna used to cut his meat into triangles. Here it's also cut into funny shapes. As Gemara, you could see that that's true because it says a fish with a bite mark in it, similar to that, that it has a strange shape in it. 
The Lord asks the Sira on the rice we just mentioned. We learn that a barrel of wine, oil, grain, figs, or olives is something you're allowed to keep. There's no similar. We have a Mishnah that says jugs of wine or of oil you do have to return. So these jugs, the barrels, whatever they are, why should one Mishnah say that you have to keep it? One Mishnah say you have to return it. So the Gemara is going to discuss this, a situation in which the standard practice was that they took the barrels and they sealed it up over the course of the winter, and then they would open it, taste it, and then close it again with what's called a roishim. That was like a partial seal again. Now, the Gemara says, the Rav Zera says, in the name of Rav, that the difference between the Mishnah and the Brisa is whether or not you had a roishim on it. So the Gemara says, you mean to say that the one that says that you have to return it is where there's a roishim, and the roishim itself is a semen. The other one is talking about where the barrels were open. If it's open, why are we discussing it, it's left to rot, it's left to be full of bugs, insects, all kinds of things are going to drink it and ruin it. So it says, no, not that it was open, but that it was covered, but it didn't have a seal on it, it didn't have a Roshim on it. So the Roshim is a simon, without a Roshim is not a simon. Abai says it's not a gasha, both of them are referring to where there's a Roshim. One is referring to before the season of opening the barrels comes, so no one usually opens the barrels, they're usually sealed, not with a Roshim, but with the original winter seal. And the other one is referring to where, uh, um, and this one was opened, and it has a Roshim on it, and therefore that itself is odd in its simon. And the other one is referring to where they already opened all the barrels, the fact that this one has a Roshim on it is no different than the other one that has a Roshim on it, so there's no simon. Like an incident that happened with Yaakov Bar Abba, who found the barrel of wine once the storehouse was already opened, and it had a Roshim on it, came to buy, and Abai said he could keep it, there's no simon. The Mugan now brings a Shaila about Malkin. Is the place in which you find something similar that a person could say that it's his because he remembers where he left it, as we mentioned earlier. Where says we're a BBS or Nachman this question? Is Malkin similar or not? Similar to the Bryce, the Bryce which we just brought. If you find barrels of wine, oil, grain, figs, or olives, that is something you let it keep. And where it asks, why don't you know, why don't you say that the place is the same and people might know where they put it down, not something that you just dropped along the way. So the Gemara answers, Rav Zvid says, we're talking about where it was found on the harbor where people bring it in on ships and they pile it up on the shore and therefore a lot of people could lose it there it's very easy to forget one or two there it says Murray, what's the reason so the Murray brings now two versions of what the reason is Murray says that the rabbanon say that it's not a simon the fact that it's left there either because we say to him just like it happened to you you forgot it there it happened to someone else when the second version of Murray says Malcolm's not a simon because really just like you forgot it in this place, someone else forgot it in this place. Now, Kamino actually says this, even if he tells you the exact spot, someone else could have put it in that exact spot, and yours is already gone from here. The more brings an incident that a person found a pile of tar in a uh, pressing place. It came to Rav. He said, to take it for yourself. There's no simon. He saw that he was a little bit nervous about it. He said, go split it with my son, Chia. Says Gemara, does that mean because he held that Malkim is not a simon? So Gemara says, no, because he saw that the Bible must have already been Vyayish, there were things growing on it, which means it had been there for a long time. Gemara mm-hmm. moves on to the next line of the Mishnah, where it's seen that clay on Purya, new Kalim, you don't have to return. The Gemara explains, but he says, name was Shmuel, new Kalim, that people haven't seen them enough and therefore they don't have enough of a, of a recognition of it and they won't recognize it if they see it. So Gemara asks, what does it have to do with anything? If it has a simon, you return it. If it doesn't have a simon, you don't return it. The Gemara answer is talking about something which doesn't have a classic simon, but a person could recognize it just by how it looks without pointing to a specific simon. Now, the halacha is that a tzorim mirabanon, you could return it in a circumstance like that. Other people, not. The Gemara quotes, based on that, that there are uh, you can return if they say they recognize it. Something had a divide in Talmud Chacham to this Indian, or who the Amr Shmuel says, people who will only change their words, only uh, change facts about three things, and that's whether they, they learned them a certain Masechta, whether they had to carry at a certain time, and whether they were uh, treated well in a guest house or not. So the Gemara says, again, that's a simon by which you can return or not return. And that is the function of Tvi's ayin, that is the function of it being new. If it's new, you don't have to worry about them recognizing it because they can't recognize it and return it at all.